however i don't think i would uh, often would not hang my ass out quite as much as you do um <laughs> because i'm more up myself about how it looks yeah yeah <laughs> Welcome to Own It, your business in your life, with Nicola Cairncross and Judith Morgan. In this podcast, we're going to cover everything you need to embrace to become a successful entrepreneur, marketing, money, and much, much more. How to create a business doing just what you love. How to own it, your business and your life. This one will be fast, funny, feisty, and very lively. So sit back and enjoy Morning, the show. Bert. Morning, how are you? Sorry to hear All you. Right. Good. Uh, well, I'll tell you about that in a minute. All right. Okay. How are you? How are yeah. you? I'm good, thank you very much. I've just come off a call with Kate Cocker, the radio presenting lady. Yeah, that she's your challenge woman, isn't she? Yeah, she is my 12-week challenge, exactly. Okay. So tell me about your week then. Well, it's all about the backache. Uh, I, I have to do my one-to-one clients lying down, um, which is okay. And I mostly don't tell them if they don't ask, if they don't begin the conversation with how are you, I don't tell them. Right. Uh, because I don't want them to, sometimes, I don't know if you've ever had conversations in your life when you're in bed on the phone, the person knows you're lying down. So I have to try and keep my energy up as if I was sitting up at my desk, because I don't want them to think that my energy is low and I'm not giving my, you know, 100% to my yeah. coaching calls with them. Absolutely. But it is possible to lie down with the iPad and the earbuds and do it from the prone position and and lying down is the only place where I get relief from the pain and also well standing up hurts sitting down really hurts so I can do the standing up desk which takes some training in stamina as I know because you've you you know because you've experimented with it Uh, so it's all about managing sciatica and some days I think it's better. So last Saturday I had a fantastic day running up and downstairs, driving the car, thinking, yay, I'm fixed. (laughs) And then you can make one tiny little false move and it's ouchie, ouchie, ouch. So are you managing it yourself? Have you seen a doctor? No, I don't do doctors. Um, I have a client who is a chiropractor and she gave me some useful advice last night and pointed me at a local practitioner of repute should I decide to go that way. I've never had anything in my life I haven't cured myself of eventually. This is the second bout I've had of this this year and it was very short in April. It's going on a bit longer this time and I asked the, the chiropractor client what she thought might be the cause and she said two things combined stress and what she called sedentarianism which means having sat down all your life uh, i.e having a sedentary life and i don't think of myself as a person who is living through stress or or, i mean obviously being an entrepreneur for 40 years is is (laughs) 50 percent stressful isn't it but uh, and then i was having a conversation with a friend and she said that The people who don't think of themselves as stressed are the people who've internalized it. And I believe that all bodily symptoms are, you know, your body trying to tell you something. And I couldn't quite understand why, since I'm so much lighter now, uh, my body would be complaining, really. And she seemed to think there was a possibility it might be relevant because you use your body in a different way. Um, I don't know. I, I'm open. I'm open to all. I, I've mostly stopped taking the drugs, but in view of our city down session this morning, I've had two of the of the mother painkillers. <laughs> Getting the mother loan. <laughs> in case they should be required. Yeah. Uh, so I can't do anything like sort of peer, lean forward and peer at the screen. Unfortunately, you've got, it, you've got it nice and big at the moment, which is great. Now, tell me some better news. Tell me about you. Uh, well, we've had quite a party week in Stuka this week. Um, and that's my, my regular call from the Greek lady recorded announcement. <laughs> Is that it? What's the chirruping? The what does she say? What does she say when she rings? Right. It's, it's always a recorded announcement. It's even more annoying now because it's in Greek. Okay. Remember at the other house I used to get recorded announcements? Yes. <laughs> I used to get recorded announcements, at least they were in English. I'm not sure why they time them for 10 o'clock on a Thursday morning. That's bizarre, isn't it? Anyway, I'm going to try and work out how to use the phone so I can block these numbers now. Um, So, yeah, past week in Greece, we went on Friday night with Zorb the Greek, um, the anniversary of, um, 
I can't remember his name now. Nikos. Nikos Zankanta, whatever. Yeah, the, the listeners will know because we talked about him at legs yeah. last week. Anyway, we got there five minutes too late, Judith. We're heading down the hill. I'm thinking it's never going to start on time because it's Greece. And we're heading down the hill and we can suddenly hear all the, all the loudspeakers spark up at the two beaches. And apparently it started on time because it was on Greek local radio. And we know how, you know, radio likes to keep things t- timely. And we arrived just in time to have missed the dancing, but there is, <laughs> it wasn't all that. It was a bit of a dance group, apparently. They were aiming for some sort of world record and there wasn't enough people who actually knew how to do the dance. So it all fell apart quite quickly. But what it did mean was that we, um, we couldn't get into our usual taverna for dinner. So after a, a, a bit of a drink and hanging out with um, some friends, we went to our taverna and um, it was full. So they sent us upstairs for cocktails which was a bit of a slippery slope because we ended up having dinner very late and then going home very late and it was two o'clock in the morning and that was Friday, which sort of wrote off Saturday rather, mainly because I just wanted to lie on the sofa and watch, I watched Kardashians for about four hours. And did you know that both, two of the Kardashians are pregnant at the same time? Phoebe's been saying to me, it's, I'm the only person she can talk about this stuff to. Do you remember what my friend Nicola said to you when you bored us one evening with the story of putting the hamster in the deep freeze? Do you remember what she said? Putting the hamster in the deep freeze. <laughs> you, had a, you had a dead gerbil. Oh, yes, yes. And, and you had to put it in the deep freeze. I can't yeah. remember why you did. Yeah. And Nicola said to you halfway through the story, I can't even feign interest in this. I, know. I, know. I can't even feign interest in the Kardashians. I'm so sorry. Well, actually, I'm not even sorry. I'm completely unapologetic about it. No, it's all right, because none of Phoebe's friends can feign interest. Yeah. In Move in on. Move on. Tell us yeah. something interesting, Nicola. Oh, well, then we went to Pat and Mike's wedding. Um, yeah. Um, now, that sounds better. Well, it was beautiful. It was, um, they got, they've been together 27 years. They got married um, seven weeks ago in England. It was too complicated to do it in Greece. And they had a, they threw a party on Sunday night, which started off with them going down the beach to get photos taken with all their friends. And then we went up to Bar 360 for a um, champagne cocktail. And uh, then we came, went down to Pefco, which would have, the garden there had been absolutely made to look fairy-like. I can't tell you. There's a girl here called um, Katrina, and she just, turned this rather unprepotting little garden into a fairy grotto for the evening. And I'm going to put some pictures on Facebook fairly soon. It, she did it so cheaply and so nicely. I think everyone should see how easy you know, it is to make candle holders and out of bits of brown paper and jam jars and things. It was amazing. And I said to her, have you ever done any crafts? And she said, no, I've never done anything like this before in my life. And I said, well, brilliant. Party organising is obviously your forte because she organised yes. the whole thing. So I said you could, you know, I'm sure there are people here that would pay you to organise their parties. So Was that Saturday night? Was this two nights running, this Sunday partying? Night. No, we had a night Which in between. Sunday, okay, okay. Yeah. okay. And, and then um, I did feel rather jaded on Monday morning, but I, I okay. did get myself up to speed by lunchtime. So, yeah, it's been, it's been, and, I, and what it's made me realise is that I've really got to, because I was letting my work sprawl out a bit again. And what I've realised is that I've really got to bring it back into order because of, because of what I'm going to tell you later in the show. But what I, must, um, what I mustn't do, because the weather's not so wonderful as it was, and I do t- tend, if there's nothing to shut the computer for and go for a swim, for example, I do tend to let the work sprawl out a bit. So I've got to keep my own boundaries in place on that one okay. because I have other things to do. Yes, yeah, alive. <sighs> exactly, working on it, Yes. Fire this week, then. Um, well, you told us last week, I think you did, I think you told us on the podcast last week, I don't remember you and I having a private conversation, but you said to us, I think, that you'd got your first client directly from the podcast who'd yes. never shown up in any other area of your life, didn't yes. you? Yes. And then I had the same thing. No. Yes. Well, really? And, and then, I, then I thought it might be the same woman, but it ah. wasn't. So I had a lovely, 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 lovely chat with a digital nomad called Hannah. Hello, Hannah, because I know she listens. Well, obviously she listens to this because this is how I met her. Uh, and she's an American, uh, but she was in Barcelona. And uh, she's an absolute expert in quite a lot of things, including Facebook ads. She gave me a top tip uh, regarding using Facebook ads for selling my book. And um, when she's at, well, I, I got a little bit confused because her address on her booking form was Albuquerque, which was seven hours behind us. And she'd booked in at 12 noon. And I thought, good heavens. I mean, I know I'm great, but I don't think I'm worth getting up at five o'clock in the morning for. But anyway, she was on European time. 
and running out of it because the Schengen Agreement, I think, only allows Americans to stay in Europe for 90 days. So that was nice. And then another lady yesterday called Rose, who doesn't listen to the podcast, I said, and I checked, she wasn't on my list and we weren't Facebook friends. And I said, well, that's odd, isn't it? How do we know one another? And she said, well, I got myself into a terrible state last Sunday and I Googled and you were on the first page. Oh. And, uh, you know, of late, I've had some SEO successes and irony of ironies, no, that's not what I mean. Coincidence, the person booked into my diary immediately after Rose, who found me via the SEO, was the lady that does my SEO. So I was able to begin the conversation <laughs> with, you'll never guess what, so the person oh, before oh. you found me via your work. Yeah, oh, so oh, yeah. two new clients finding me by, you know, random online magic, which we just love, don't we? Yeah, we do. Did she tell you what phrase she searched that you came up with? So no, well? no, because she was in, she was an emotional extremist and oh. and and was a very fast talker, and uh, it was enough for me to know that she'd googled and found me. Yeah. To be honest, I didn't want because actually yeah. I don't think anybody ever remembers what they put into Google, do you? No, uh, yeah, sometimes, but then I'm a bit. We yeah. would like them to, but so, yeah. just don't forget. Yesterday was Wednesday, and she googled on Sunday. I didn't think that was a question that was worth asking, really. No, fair enough. Well, what's your Wi-Fi is that Sarah spent the last week getting our podcast episodes onto <gasps> YouTube. Yes. And onto it, YT. Well done, Sarah. Um, and, and it will be e- an easy job going forward, but it certainly hasn't been an easy job to get it going because um, you do it from Libsyn and it involves making two other images and all that stuff. But it's well worth doing because... Already, episode one of Own It has had more views in the last seven days than any other of my videos. So, you know, all I did was tweet it and put it on Facebook that we've now got it onto YouTube. And, you know, it's just astonishing, really, how you start accumulating viewers or listeners or whatever they are. Um, And episode 50, which is the one called Keep It Simple, is the second most popular out of the hundred she's got up there already so far in the last seven days. and. You know, you can see all sorts of an analytics in YouTube nowadays. You know, how I, like, I do like a nice analytics page. But it was just fascinating to see that already it's becoming more popular than all my other videos. And it's, a, it's an audio. So now, that- Nicola, let me ask a question about this. I'm going all logical on you now. Go on. Um, what if it ends up showing that we get more listeners for our podcast on YouTube than we do on iTunes? Well, that'll be jolly annoying, right? It's because we haven't done it for it. Well, mind you, having said that, I think uploading such a lot of content all at once, although it will have been appearing in, you know, my 600 odd subscribers would have been getting notifications all day long about own it's being uploaded, which oh, I did lose four subscribers, but that was all. Um, I think, you know, uploading such a big weight of content like that is, is only going to tilt the algorithms in your favour. Because you're starting to get a lot of views very quickly on new content on your channel. So I sort of don't regret that we hadn't done it to date, but it's, um, it's a big job. Could it give us a, could give us a very nice boost. Um, or yes. Philip, as a client of mine, used the word yesterday. Now, it reminds me as well of something else. Oh, yes, a very nice woman, when you posted that in our group, said, oh, it's a good excuse to go back to the beginning and listen again. What a nice woman. I know. How marvellous is that, that people want to go yes. back to the beginning again? But yeah, you know very sweet. Been, I've been dipping in and out and, and you know, I love those bits at the beginning that we, when we, when we, yeah. when, when you say something funny. <laughs> yeah. When I'm really eccentric to order. Yes. <laughs> and, uh, I put it on. I, I just listened to a few at random and actually they are really good. <laughs> so. yeah, I, I really love our podcast. I do. I do. Yeah. Yeah. I've been listening to that's it. why I, that's why I'm here. Greater Luff has no woman in pain that she would be here to do the podcast on Absolutely. a Thursday morning. And you're sounding good too. You're sounding good. Yeah, yeah, my energy, I mean, I'm in a good mood and my energy is great. And right now I can't feel anything. So that's great. Now, was that it? Uh, Fueling your fires? The podcast on my team. Oh, brilliant. Well, I mean, it's a stonker. Well done, you two. Well, well well done, Sarah. She's the one who's puzzled me. Here at Own It, we personally believe that leaders are readers. But sometimes it's just not convenient to read and you'd rather listen instead. For listeners of Own It! The Podcast, Audible is offering a free audiobook download with a free 30-day trial to give you the opportunity to check out their service. A couple of titles we've picked out for you particularly are Lean In by Sheryl Sandberg or Crush It! Why Now Is The Time To Cash In On Your Passion by Gary Vaynerchuk. To download your free audiobook today, go to audibletrial.com forward slash own it. Again, that's audibletrial.com 
forward slash own it for your free audio book. You can pick one of the ones I've chosen for you or you can choose something else. Enjoy your listen. Client challenge of the week. Now, I've, I've got a sort of, a, a, yeah, it's, it's arisen from something that's happened this week because I've been doing okay. the 12-week challenge with Kate, as you know, and it's yep. going into a free Facebook, my free Facebook master, mastermind group. And so I haven't really been as attentive to detail as I might have been if it was going to be something that was a permanent course. Um, it's really just, you know, for people who've joined and they want to follow along and see what's happening. Um, and I forgot to edit off the beginning of one of them the other day. And it was someone, I was sitting there playing my hair and then Kate arrived, she was eating her breakfast and it was all, you know, very informal. And I got some quite, um, detailed feedback about why perhaps I might have edited that bit off at the beginning. So I thought we could talk about how real should you be online and whether, how to take feedback and whether to take action on that feedback. Sort of the Chris Barrow, hang your ass out. Come yes, up. you know, you know, you and I are unlikely to agree on this, which always makes for a better podcast, actually. <laughs> so good. Okay, you, well, you speak first. Well, uh, well, I had to manage my. It's someone I know very well, and I know that they would only have my best interests at heart. But um, it's been on a week when I've produced quite a lot of content, and we've been churning it all out, and and there's been a lot of editing, and a lot of uploading, and a lot of video compressing, and a lot of all of the, all of that stuff, which is deeply dull but has to be done. And so I was a little bit tetchy about it because I thought my honest thought was. Um, it's so easy to criticize someone else when you're not actually producing any content yourself. That was the unworthy thought that went through my mind. And so I had to just calm down a little bit before I then took a few deep breaths and replied nicely because I did know this person would have my best interests at heart. So, but yeah, it's so, so that the, the balance it's the balance between getting it out there and getting it perfect. Oh, there's quite a lot of big space between getting it out there and getting it perfect though, isn't there? Yes. It's not, an, it's not an either or. No, and I had actually edited some of it. So obviously, but I decided to leave that bit in because I thought that is real. You know, that's me and Kate turning up on a Saturday morning, you know, just done my hair, just washed my hair. It's not dry yet. She's eating her breakfast, but we're making time in our busy lives to record this thing for these people to try and help them move forward. And I had made the decision to keep it in. So interesting how people perceive it, isn't it? Yes. Hmm, I don't know. I mean, we are the editor of our own content. And so the final decision rests with us, doesn't mm. it? Mm. I think you are prepared to hang your ass out a lot more than I am. Uh, <laughs> I, I, think, I think I tend towards the mm, le- slightly less slam, bam, thank you, ma'am. Um, mm. But I... But I it's one of the things that I admire most about you and one of the things that gets on my wick most about you as well. Yeah. Uh, so it's a love-hate thing. Uh, so, for instance, when you were talking about being five minutes late for the dancing, my exact thought was, I couldn't bear to live that woman's life. It would just drive me mental. <laughs> because, But that's who you are. And I have to love and accept you exactly as you are. And I'm not going to change you. You know, we've been in business yin and yang for, for I don't know how long it's been now, an awful long time. And you haven't changed in all that time. I haven't changed in all that time. We're not going to change, are we? That's just yeah. who you are. And I think it's a complex thing because I think it's too easy to say. It's too easy to say, that's just who I am. It's authentic. Love me or leave me, take it or leave it. But what we do know is that certainly in the money gym days, as I'm not, I don't know your following now as well as I did then because I was involved in it, people loved you for it. And those are the ideal clients. So if I saw something like that, like through the eyes of the chap who's giving you the feedback, I'd probably say the same thing, but I'd keep quiet about it because it's my, it's my, my view of the world, not yours. It's his view of the world, not yours. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, you could argue that it might put off some clients because they would think, and, it, and in fact, Kate's website and all of the stuff she produces is really highly professional. And I'm sure that, you know, she if she'd have checked me out before, she might have thought, oh, okay, she's a little bit slapdash. I don't know if I want to work with her. So it might put some big clients off. But because she was introduced personally and highly recommended, she didn't go and check me out. So she didn't see any of the things that could have been a bit more polished, perhaps. So 
And I think the one thing that I am inspiring her to is stop worrying about things so much and stop wanting to yeah. absolutely yeah. Loving, get it out there. And also the yes. fact that, you know, it's, it's all very well for other people to criticise, but if they're not doing the thing that themselves that they're criticising you for, I think you've got to take it with a pinch of salt and think, does this, does this particular feedback matter to me or not? Well, we'll talk about feedback in a minute, uh, mm -hmm. but I want to talk about something like, if you've ever done anything like uh, performing in, in my own example, it's choirs, music, orchestras, things like that. What our most highly critical, critically developed faculty is, is that of being critical. So, for instance, yeah. we used to, I don't do it so much anymore, but we used to read the crits before we watched the telly, before we went to the theatre, before we went to the movies, and we were swayed by their opinion. I don't do that so much anymore. But critique is easy. The minute you stand up on your hind legs and have a go, you realise how easy criticism is. Uh, performance is not easy at all. Now, I don't, I'm not a fan of perfectionism, but I am of closer, well, professionalism, but not, if that's going to put my clients off, then no, as good as it can be is what I want. Now, I'm just about to send out my book to the, the three people who volunteered to proofread it for typos. I hate feedback. <clears throat> I'm going to give them a very tight brief, which is you are looking for typos only. I do not want any kind of editorial comment or feedback of any description because, you know, I've got my own views about that and I don't want to debate it with you. This is typos only. Will you take that brief? And if they won't, they won't. Yeah. I don't, I'm not a fan of feedback. I don't like it. Now, feedback is the breakfast of champions, Nicola. So I'm only holding myself back that I won't, that I don't like feedback, but I'm too fragile for it. I'm too fragile for it i just want to do it my own way and if that suits great and if it doesn't tough mm. yes yeah well i'm quite robust so and and you know you I, are more robust than i am you yeah. are yeah i mean you know and i i do want to make a happy medium i mean it's like for example i've just um i, I want to get one of my first books the mindset marketing and money one i want to get it edited again because i know it's not perfect and i also know that edit, editing isn't my strong suit so i'll just be adding more stuff in in places where I then go on to repeat myself later. Do you know what I mean? There's no way I can keep the whole shape of thing in my head. So I need no, a professional no, editor. No. And I will get a professional editor to do book number two. You know, somebody who's got a lot more detail orientated than me and who will pick out all the things that I should, shouldn't leave in. And so I, I do want to improve and get better. And it's interesting because we've got a lady in the village here who has written two books on, um, not on living in Greece, but that she's written two books set in Greece. And it's been a very interesting experience because I've only just met her and, and she's totally not interested in feedback. She's totally not interested in anyone. She is getting someone to proofread. She did get someone to proofread book number two where she didn't on book number one. And she says herself she can't do editing. But she is quite clever at marketing her book online. But every time I make any kind of suggestion, like, you know, to put in book one that they could come and join a private Facebook group, and I recommend obviously to look at what Daphne Capsali does because she's great at marketing her books in a really natural way. This woman just says, nope, not interested. <laughs> well, I mean, I admire, I admire her single-mindedness. Yeah, and, and it really catches me by surprise because there's all these people who want my advice all the time and then she's just not interested. In well, I quite like that about her. She's her own woman, you see, and I'm not saying she's right. I'm, li I'm liking her certainty because so many of my clients are racked with uncertainty. She's quite refreshing. Yeah, yeah. And she, uh, she literally just wants to get as many books out as possible because she knows that each book adds to the sales of the next Quite. Book. And what you said and was she was quite did. good at marketing. Your description of her reminded me of me quite a lot, actually. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. So she, she, she found that the sales of, because she's put her second book up and obviously for a week it's 99p on Kindle. It's really ex it accelerated the sales of her first books. It's one in a series. And so that was, that was really interesting. But it, it, was, it is interesting to be in a conversation where someone says, you know, I'd love to make more sales, but they're not actually interested in hearing any suggestions about how they could do that if it doesn't come from them. So or, if it doesn't chime with, or if it doesn't chime with their own um, ideas. Yeah, yeah. So, okay, so then how do you decide if you're going to um, listen to feedback? How much of it do you listen to and do you take action? Because you could be blown about in all directions, couldn't you, by feedback and criticism? 
If you're asking me, Judith, it, it was a no and a no to first the questions one and two there. And the third <laughs> one would be if I heard ideas and I went, oh, that's a good idea. I, yeah. I saw the potential. So something wafted past me. Uh, like your Facebook group idea, which obviously isn't a new idea to me. So I've already incorporated that. But if I, when I see ideas, I'm not proud. I go, oh, that's a good idea. And and if it suits me, I suck it in and, and you know, use it. Yeah, yeah. And the I do know about myself, I like to discover the idea. I'm not mad keen on good ideas coming at me from other people. I, it, it needs to be my own, which is a bit, little bit tragic. Yeah, well, that's typical of lots of people, isn't it? You know, you can fire ideas at people and, and they don't t- take them on board at all and, until they discover them for themselves. So, well, yes, and I don't think it's terribly helpful, and it's something you and I both do. I don't think it's always terribly helpful for everyone if all we do is fire ideas at people. Yeah. Because their ideas as we see it not necessarily as they do and that's actually what we're talking about here isn't it your man that gave you the feedback was as he saw it not necessarily as you did no absolutely yeah and and like i say it helped that i knew him and knew his good intentions so but sometimes if you had your time over what would you do no i I made the conscious decision to leave it on actually so i don't think i would have edited edited off but, um, so actually, yeah. feedback's not useful unless it, 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 it makes you think, oh, perhaps I would do that differently mm. next time. Is I'm, it? I'm totally open to it. I just have to manage my own emotions around it because it feels like criticism and that, fit, that makes you defensive, doesn't it? Ah, uh, I see. Feedback or criticism. Yes. Did he say anything nice? Oh, yeah. He's always saying nice things. That's, that's why okay. I was able to that, listen. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I, I don't know the answer to this, Nicola. I know no, I'm very defensive. <laughs> I, I know I'm very defensive. However, I don't think I would uh, often would not would not hang my ass out quite as much as you do, um, <laughs> because I'm more up myself about how it looks. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I definitely want to improve things in that direction. Now I've settled on a name for the company. I, I want. Um, I could. Act, I, I actually want people to come and make all my stuff look gorgeous. Yeah. But I, I work on the on the thick, the principle of getting it out there, seeing if it works, seeing if anyone responds to it before I make it a pay to make it look gorgeous. Has anybody said, "Oh, I love that bit on the beginning of you two looking bonkers and eating your breakfast"? No, not yet. No. <laughs> <laughs> Plenty amount of time, though, isn't it? <laughs> the other thing about firing ideas at people is is that I remember when Neil used to do it before I I embraced outsourcing. I used to feel completely overwhelmed by his ideas and I resented him for firing them at me because it meant more work for me so that's another thing is to think about whether people you know giving you ideas make you feel oh god just more work you know more work to do or whether you can possibly think in terms of what he does and he's taught me to now is think not just oh what you know it's who can I get to do that rather than oh that's another thing I've got to do yeah or feeding them out only the most important ones and, and at a, a rate that your receiver can manage. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Kate's really embraced, you know, because we've been working with an outsourcer that I've worked with before and she's astonished that you can get things done overnight while you're asleep for as little as, as it costs to get it done. And, and it's just, she said it's taken such a weight off her mind that she doesn't have to battle with her previous web developer to get the tiniest changes made. You know, she, she can just get anything fixed on the website at all. Yeah, yeah. She's amazed by that. So that's another thing to think about is, you know, when you get feedback and ideas, are you thinking I have to do that and it's a load of work or can I get someone else to do it? Good stuff. All right. That's, that's a good one. Um, what uh, is your word of the week? Well, it's pain. Oh. Uh, because it's my uh, um, thing of the week and last week and a little bit of the week before. I tell you what, it's quite an interesting thing because, you know, I want to live until I'm 179. But the one thing that causes me to change my mind about that is pain because you think, oh, I don't think I could live with this until I was 179. And what it does is it it cuts down your joie de vivre by 50% plus, actually. And uh, I hate, I'm not a person that does illness and I hate people saying, how are you today? In that sort of pathetic voice. I'm not, I'm not a good patient um i want to be back on my feet uh and it's got other implications that i'll tell you about in project updates yeah Uh, i can't i've been so lucky i've had things wrong with me but they've always been sort of 
shortly fixed, fixed in short order. And I haven't ever had to cope with chronic pain. And um, and I so I you know I really feel for you. There's a f- oh, this isn't going to turn into chronic pain. That chronic pain is every day for the rest of your life. This is oh, I'm on week three and it's getting better. I honestly that that's not happening here. <laughs> All right. I, um, I've got a mate here whose husband is suffering um, neck. He's got um, herniated, four herniated discs in his mm. upper back and neck, and he's in oh. a lot of pain. And it's, oh. you know, he's having lots of injections and MRI scans and all those sort of things. But he, he, he can't sit upright either. But everyone's rallying round. And even on the Zorba the Greek night, you know, somebody brought a reclining chair. Oh, they, they drove him round the village to say hello to everyone lying oh, down. Oh, nice. Yes, yeah, nice, nice. And then on on the wedding night, they they somebody rustled up a reclining chair for him, so he could actually be there, but but be in a semi upright position, in a comfy position. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's that was rather nice. Um, my word of the week is audio, because you know just seeing that you can put audio onto YouTube and it do so well has just completely opened my eyes to that possibility. So, um, and still, Gary's bang, Gary 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 said today. If basically anyone who's becomes an expert on Alexa now, you know, and, and Siri and that sort of voice control software, you're, you're going to be, you know, really, really rich within five years. Well, two thoughts. When I opened Amazon this morning, it showed me the six iterations of Alexa. And I sat there and I looked at it and I thought, I don't understand this. I'm never going to have I a use know. for this. I don't need it in its first iteration. That's another five iterations. I just, not to mention the whole thing of it, you know, being the spy in your home. But the good bit about audio is, of course, given that my book is 52 questions and answers, I could make 52 short audios for YouTube. Oh, yeah. oh marvellous. Yes. Yeah. And that answers Irene's point this morning when she said, wouldn't it be wonderful to have it in your voice? I can do it straight away. I can do it now. And those could be podcast episodes. As well, well, how would well, no not from that why would that help well because it's another it's another podcast you know um, yeah but it would be a one-off 52 oh i see yes it would be a year long if it was 52 but you, i can't do the tech of podcasting that would be a faff for me yeah i know but you just outsource it don't you because you know mm-hmm. there's i mean pat flynn's just launched his how to do a podcast course there's gonna be lots of people who do that who are going to then be touting themselves around very inexpensively to do the podcast set up for people Mm, well, I have a client who does that, but she isn't inexpensive because I'm her coach and neither should she be because it's quite a skilled thing. But I, I think the audio on YouTube would be enough for me, to be honest, Nicola, but I'll bear in mind your thought about turning it into a podcast as well. Well, it is just a different audience and the more we can get to different people in different ways, the more... You yeah, know. but what you've said so far is how impressive the, the potential audience on YouTube is. Yes, I know. But how impressive is the potential audience on iTunes because they're rolling cars off the production line with iTunes embedded in them. Yes, well, you've been promising me that for three years. And has it happened yet? Well, it is happening, yes. Is Is it? You better buy a new car to make sure you're telling me the truth. No, it honestly is. I I took a screenshot of a dashboard in a a motoring magazine I saw. So You should get out more, darling, shouldn't you? Screenshots of motoring magazines. What's the matter with you? (laughs) Well, it obviously was thrown up on my Google alerts. Oh, anyway, the good. point is, the point I'm making for our lovely listeners is, if you're an, if you're interested in audio, start boning up on this whole Siri, Alexa. What's the other one? Um, what's the one that's the other one that's? Uh, oh, is it Cortana? I don't know. Anyway, these things that sit in your home and are voice controlled. I mean, we've already got to the point where nearly fifty percent of the searches on Google are voice activated. No, it's called Google, Google, Google something, isn't it? The other one. I can't remember. Google Home is it called? There's a sort of yeah. white and grey, sleek-looking yeah. thing. Yes, that's right. They're so, all listening to you, listeners. Don't buy them. <laughs> it's true. I mean, it's true. <laughs> do not listen to them it's the cia on the other end i know but you know the thing is it's it's resistance is futile Judith. it's a bit like google resistance is futile <laughs> oh, i don't want one of those do you know why i don't want one of those i don't see a need for it well i don't either i'm perfectly capable of typing i'm going to shout at some sort of gadget and it's going to organize my life for me why well, i'm 62 i've never felt the need for that why would i feel the need for it now it's weird i know but all young people young people they'll be using it <laughs> and, if, and if we want to sell things to those young people... Is that people, your granny voice? Yeah. <laughs> oh, you the to young sell people. <laughs> things to those young people. Because, yeah. you know, Phoebe's 22, and in 23 years' time, she'll be in one of the biggest demographics for buying things online, you know, and it's just... Oh, I see. What you're saying is just sell them any old nonsense they'll buy, one of these no, gadgets. I'm not saying that. I'm saying we have to know how to sell them our stuff because we know our stuff's the best <sighs> through these new channels. And 
these, you know, if people wake up in the morning and say, um, play me, you know, they're getting up in the morning, they're getting ready for it, play me own it, the podcast. We have to be there so that we're listed in this audio environment and they can, you know, that Alexa can go off and find own it, the podcast on say iTunes or, or YouTube or whatever, because if we're not findable, then we won't be yeah, but we're already findable on both of those places. And presumably Alexa knows to go and look in both of those places, doesn't she? Well, that's the point. We are in those places, but there's a lot of people who aren't. That's my point. I see. Got to I see. Understand that this okay. is the way it's, it's people are going to be in their homes searching for our content. And if they can't find our content, we're going to miss out because other people will have made chill. sure. Alexa chill, babe. Chill, chill, chill. I've got I haven't you. felt this passionate yeah. about anything. It's can I just tell you, can I tell you this? Can I tell you this? <laughs> I love your fantasy, which you've trotted out on this show, not once but twice now, that people get up in the morning and shout at their gadget, play me, own it, the podcast. I mean, is that what you'd want to hear first thing in the morning, you and me having a laugh? Well, it's better than listening to um, Radio 1 or, you know, uh, uh, Capital Radio with all the adverts. The point is, people don't like adverts. They want to listen to content with no adverts in it. Yeah, we've got to think about what that means. Well, it means we have to be very sparing with our sponsorship slots which yes. we are being, we've only got but one. But also, if people don't want adverts, you know, well, I don't either. You're right. I try and watch every, I only watch BBC and have an ad blocker on my computer. Yeah, so you are the extreme, aren't you? I am the extreme, yes. But it gives me a problem for sellers you buy because then how am I going to advertise my book? Anyway. <laughs> Moving swiftly along, let's do project updates. Right, you first. Ah, well, the back pain has implications for the finishing of the book because I can't sit in the chair. Now, uh, we'll come to the philosophical element of that in a moment. We'll start with the good news. I had an email the day before yesterday from a publisher. Good God. Wait, calm down. And it said, I don't suppose you're writing a book, are you, that you'd like us to publish? And they were Californian-based and I believe I have been in touch with them before, actually, and I've probably got them in a file on my computer somewhere, you know, saying, contact them when you're ready to publish a book. But I took the unorthodox step for Judith of Googling to find out, you know, what people thought of publishing their book with them, and it wasn't good. So that's, I, I've deleted that, but yeah. I'm taking it as a sign, Nicola. I'm taking it as a sign, an omen. An omen that, that yeah. the universe is awakening to the knowledge yes. of the book. Well, I'm actually, but actually, um, Charlotte, the SEO expert, asked me yesterday, how was I going to publish it? And once I started talking to her, and in fact, another friend asked me last night how I was going to publish it, I can make so much more money publishing it myself. Why would I want yeah. to do that through a publisher? And that especially given that it's going to be an annual thing. I don't want to give somebody a contract to publish that annually. No, absolutely. And, and it's not just about the money. It's about the marketing. You know, publishers don't do any marketing. You're going to have to do it all yourself anyway. So it's just completely... So what's the point? Absolutely, yeah. yes. Now, the man that's drawing the covers has sent me the first six iterations. None of us were blown over by them. There's uh, one or two or perhaps three that could be workable. One of them was in acid yellow, which was a little bit shocking. Ooh. I know, but apparently when you put it into some sort of designery thing, my pink, one of the things it says it goes with is acid yellow. And of course, that would make it highly visible on the postage stamp on Amazon. The jury's out on that. Um, I'm not starting on Amazon and I'm not starting with the print on demand book. So probably not for the first iteration. Um, I finished my proofreading from the lying down position and put all my um, corrections in. I do want to think about editing uh, and I'd like to have a chat with you perhaps off podcast about that. But when it comes to the sort of philosophical aspects of, of the pain and I can't sit at my desk and why can't I finish my book sort of a bit like a sort of stroppy teacher. Why can't I finish my book? You know, <clears throat> the only thing that comes up is my current theme of the moment, excuse me, <clears throat> which is the incomprehensible perfection of life itself. You know, uh, let's just wait and find out why I'm being slowed down. Mm. Yeah, perhaps there is a reason. You never yeah. know. You never know. No. Well, I have actually started my book using the snowflake method. I've mentioned the snowflake method before. It's a you method have. by created by Randy Ingerman, Ingermanson, sorry, Ingermanson. He um, is responsible for the book Writing Fiction for Dummies. He's written six novels himself and won 12 awards for six novels. So you've got to you think that he knows what he's talking about. He's got nice cred, hasn't he? Yeah, he's also an ex-software designer. So it's all about um, project management and software design and all that stuff. And he's, his whole um, snowflake method is based on fractal theory. 
which is the mathematical thing that I can't really explain to you, but go and have a look, you know, do a little search on fractal theory, everyone, because it produces them somehow mathematics produce the most amazing pictures. And if you do a search on Google for a fractal oh, theory, oh yes, it's really, about the exquisite beauty, mathematical beauty of natural yes. things, isn't it? Yes. And how yeah. lots and lots and lots and lots of the building blocks of life are made up of the same. Oh, sigh, you know, talk math to me, Nicola. I'm sighing with desire here. Oh, no. <laughs> So anyway, so I, I've started working through it and um, my most annoying thing is that I can't copy and paste his instructions from the, the Kindle to me so that I can then, you know, do my answers. Um, you're supposed well, to- hang on a minute. Haven't you got the Kindle app on your laptop? I have. And I've tried to do it and, it, and I've tried to share, highlight and share with myself. <laughs> but, you know, by email and by note, notes and it just won't do it. So no, that is an honour. It's not even in an editable PDF anywhere. Yeah, there might be. You can, could you turn it into an editable PDF? Yeah. Yeah. Hold on a second. I'm just going to... Um... I'm not sure we need to do this live on the podcast, Toby. That could be quite slow, but that is a possibility. <laughs> <laughs> but right. this is your sci-fi opus, is it? My sci-fi, my sprawling epic spanning time and space. And you have to take something with you back next Wednesday, don't you? I, I did it. It was yesterday. Oh, right. Good. So, yes. I, I mean, I literally, I was doing it at a quarter past eight the night before. That's how deadline driven I am and very naughty too. Yes. And um, Yeah. But I, they were well impressed that I'd actually turned up with something. And, and the funny thing was, I'd got it all out of my head the night before. And as I was walking down the road to the right club meeting, lots and lots and lots of new ideas came flooding in. It was almost like I'd emptied Lovely. my brain. So there was space for more. Lovely. And I really was at the point where I had to get there and sit down and scribble all my notes down. In case yes. I forget them all. But yes. or speak it into your iPhone. That's very true. At the bottom of my bag. But um, yes, <laughs> I could have done. Does it have a working title, or is it too soon no, for that? No, 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 no working title yet. Okay, so I've written down here sci-fi epic. That's what I'm going to have to call it in shorthand until you give us something else we need to yeah. call it. Bye. Yeah, but I'm there. I've got I've got some characters forming in my head, and I've got a, a sort of a plot. And someone suggested that it sounded too much for one book, so I could make a series of novellas, which yes. is quite a um, good tradition in science fiction, yes. I think. Yes. And um, I'm just feeling really excited about it. So now I'm thinking I'm going to have to, that's why I want to corral my working hours back into certain time frames so that I've got big empty chunks of time that I can work on this. Well, it's a nice, nice, not so much autumn in Stupa, but a nice winter project for Stupa. Yeah, exactly. The long winter yeah. seasons are just going to fly. By. Can you make that thing small so I can see the time? Oh, yes, of course. Yes. I always forget you can see what I'm doing. (laughs) (laughs) Keep doing check nicely. Right. Tell me about who or what's impressed then. Uh, Before we do that, I'm just going to tell you one more thing because I've just realised I wrote the note in the wrong place. I've got two people that impress me. But when I was talking to Charlotte yesterday afternoon, she asked me what my book was about. I I said it's about three things. Well, actually, she helped me work out what it was about. It's about love, humour and harangue. You know what harangue means? Yeah, well, I know what it means when you harangue someone. Yes, well, I do tend to harangue a bit in the book. I'm either being funny or loving or haranguing. (laughs) It's <laughs> a good mix, though, isn't yes, it? Yes, it is quite a good mix, actually. Yes, it is. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> so, can I tell you about my two impressed people? Yes, please. One is the lady I've told you about before, whose name is Vanessa, who made me the beautiful AB crystal ring. And I then said to her, she's been so helpful with this, I can't tell you. I then said to her, look, it's so beautiful, I want to make a necklace to match, and I want to make it myself. Oh. And she has sourced me the beads that we think are the in- international, globally available, most close match to the one in the ring. And she's importing them for me, and she's connected me with the um, sort of elastic wire that you feed them onto. And she sent me a YouTube video to show me how to not the wire so that it doesn't break and she's sending me three strands of these and we're really hopeful that all of these supplies will arrive in the next week so I can make the necklace necklace and wear it in my photo shoot which is on the 7th of October might do might not but um, the photographer said to me and you'll need accessories I went oh I don't do accessories (laughs) I don't do jewelry and then I realized of course I have my brand pink scarf which I always wear every day of my life and I might have an AB crystal necklace so I might have an accessory by this time next week and I'm going into the 
jewelry making business just for the one necklace you understand <laughs> so one. big up to vanessa of luxuria jewelry who made the ring but has also found the beads to match the ring and i'm going to make the necklace and that's very generous of her isn't it oh she she's said, been no, an, I'll make no you. she's been yeah. an absolute saint about it and she keeps i keep saying as i did to your sister yesterday in another thing no rush nobody understands anymore the concept of no rush they go oh, i'm right on it i go you don't need to be right on it and you know i'm so relaxed about this it can come whenever it likes anyway but vanessa Thank you, you lovely sausage. I know she listens to the podcast. And my other one is the beautician, Marcy, who's going to do the makeup for the photo shoot. Um, but more because when she was here and we had this idea, should we have makeup? She then said, uh, come over to my place. And she said, I'm going to do two. I'm going to do one that's natural that you'll pay for. And one will be my gift to you that I think you should have for a photo shoot. I might have said that last week. But more importantly, she then sent me a message saying, look, Judith, look at my Facebook page. And she, my asking her to do my makeup for the photo shoot has given her the idea to turn that into a new service that she now offers in her business. Oh, fantastic. Isn't that good? So I only got to sow the seed and she's turned it into a profit center. And before she was too cheap. Now this is brilliant. With a new service, you can charge what you like, can't you? Because there's no comparisons. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's that's really good. And in fact, um, I've been having a conversation with someone about, you know, how to charge things. And um, we were having that conversation. I said, you know, do you just buy them and then add a bit on top rather than seeing what? And she said, yes. And I said, well, you, you could triple your profits by get, seeing what other people are paying for similar items and then just discounting a tiny bit from there. And she was like, oh, oh, oh I don't know. I, I wouldn't feel very good doing that. And I said, well, you know, the thing is, it's all about having freeing up a marketing budget. You're struggling to market this business because you've got no marketing budget. This would help you get a marketing budget. Why are and people it, so weird about what they charge for things? Yeah, we ought to talk about that again. Sometime. We should, yes. Oh, anyway, yeah. I mispronounced her name. It's not Marcy, it's Margie. I always get her name wrong. It's spelt Marcy, but pronounced Margie. She, big up to her. She's a top bird. Now, yeah. tell me who and what's impressed you. Well, apart from Katrina, who did the marvellous fairy tale wedding, and, yes. um, and you know, various other people, Randy and co, and Sarah doing all that monstrous work for getting the, getting the own it. It's, you know, it's very, very repetitive and not very creative, apart from making the pictures. And oh, just... I mean, I had no idea she was going to do 100. That's so impressive. Well, isn't we it? Do 150. We've got 150 episodes. Well, I know we have, but to get 100, I thought, you know, I thought we were going to do one a week. I had no idea that she was going to well, do a big long she she, This is a, a good example of bish bosh bash not happening because i said just you know let's just start from now <laughs> just bang one up a week and, yeah. and bang one up a week and because it's easy week by week when she's doing the podcast for us yeah but you know what about all those back episodes and she said no i can't bring myself to, no. to not doing it from now it's doing the job properly or not at all and so she's you know started from episode one so it all flows so beautifully on the playlist i'm it's so thrilled so interesting it. how our our greatest strength is also our, often our greatest week Weakness, isn't it? Yeah. It's the much. thing that we love most about Sarah and the thing that we occasionally are uncomfortable <laughs> about. And, and, you know, and you're the same and I'm the same. We're all the yeah. same. Our asset and our liability is the one and the same thing so often. Yeah, the bish bosh bash thing. Get it yes. out. It's Keep going. Thing. Katrina, Sarah. Yeah, and then finally Phoebe and Heather because um, Heather, Phoebe's, well, okay, backtrack a bit. Heather's got a mate who used to be in Jeffro Tull who's about to release an album which is going to get an awful lot of attention because it's the first album in years and years and years and years and years. Very well thought of musician and um, finally got to the point where ready to go into the studio to record the backing vocals. And Heather's been a real brick for this friend. And she's, she organized all this, all the singers, the studio, you know, everything. She, she was the fixer for the session, if you like. She, she hired Phoebe to come and film behind the scenes. And Phoebe, it's not Phoebe's kind of music at all. She was, comp Phoebe was sort of blown away by the fact people make a living singing. She was fascinated by the fact these guys turned up and sang and got paid for it and went away again. So that, that opened her mind. She did all the filming. She got, she's got the final um, music to put the, mu the filming to. And she's gone back and she started, I mean, how anyone sits down at an empty thing and starts, it's a bit like writing a book, I suppose, isn't it? You have to sit down at an empty page and start putting something together. And she got to the point where she thought she'd finished it. She sent it off for Heather. Heather was allowed one round of changes. Heather decided that she couldn't possibly communicate all the changes she needed to Phoebe over, you know, Skype or whatever. So she turned up and I had Phoebe grumbling down the um, messaging to me yesterday. It took four hours, four hours, she said. Changed everything from top to bottom. And I said, 
but is it better, Phoebe? And she said, yes, it's much better. And yeah. I learned a load. So that's pretty cool, isn't it? To be able that to, is cool. yeah. be able to um, take your, your artistic thing and take direction from someone else who hasn't got the same kind of artistic thing, but is artistic in a different way. And yes. to come out with a better product because of it. Well, and for the two of them to co-create on that, it's a bit like when you and I used to try and do this. If you've got, you know, two different types of personality trying to collaborate on something and pushing through and getting a better product, it's difficult, but better. Yeah, absolutely. And and I've seen I've seen both versions. I saw Phoebe's version, which was lovely, and I've seen the finished version, which is much better in, in terms of telling the story of the album which is what it's for. It's to promote, you know, it's to market the album. Well, know. I have a special request. Go on then. As it happens, I do have a favourite Jethro Tull song. Do you? Can we have that on the soundtrack of this show so that people who are younger than you and me and have no idea who Jethro Tull are? Yeah, go on it, then. I've just looked at that while you're talking. My favourite one's called Living in the Past. Living in the Past. Do, 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 do. Oh, I like that one too. Yes, Living in the Past. Can we have a bit of a snippet of it on the end of the podcast? Yeah, and I love your do do do. Yeah, <laughs> things the theme tune. Wrote the theme tune. Well, of course, she, he's written lots of ones. Do not please be tempted to give us ring out solstice bells. I don't like that one at all. But living in the past, marvelous. Well, the reason why nobody knows who they are is that all the dates on these songs are pretty much 1971 to 1977, my era, Nicola. Yes, prog rock was a bit. <laughs> the of days when time. I used to watch Top of the Pops, and my father used to say, "What exactly is that one on the end contributing to this?" <laughs> My dad used to say that about Errol Brown and hot chocolate. Didn't oh, you? Didn't no, get, he was great. <laughs> My best memory about Errol Brown is... Doodle, 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 doodle. What's the one about being sexy? Because my, my da- line dance teacher, Sharon, used to get us all dancing. Me and all the old age pensioners were dancing to the one about, uh, the, I don't know, Errol Brown's one about being sexy. I can't remember that. Oh, chocolate. Do you think I'm sexy? Do you think I'm sexy? No, that Whatever. was there wasn't, it wasn't. Yeah, it wasn't that one, but it was one about being sexy. Very sexy song because Errol Brown was a very sexy guy, wasn't he? Exactly. My dad was obviously deeply jealous of him because my mother fancied him like yes. that. <laughs> <laughs> my father was always jealous of the chaps that my mother fancied. My mother fancied most chaps, actually, to be honest. <laughs> she liked a man, my mother. She, she liked a, a well-turned ankle. Yeah, she did. She did. <laughs> and off podcast one day, I'll tell you a very funny story about that. Yes, talking of which, we've got Suzanne Jorgensen arriving soon. She likes a, a well-turned Ooh, ankle as well, doesn't she? <laughs> she's coming out for a stay with you, is she? she oh, is. God, I'm the trouble that you three are going to get into in the next week. Oh, oh my yeah. God, I can't wait for next show, next week's show. She's not, she's not arriving to the 14th. So I was. Oh, okay. We can anticipate that. Oh yes, we can by about three weeks. That's okay. Yeah. Good. Good job. Okay, lovely. Thank you very much. Thanks for persevering through the through your pain, you old trooper. All right. No, this is the easy bit. Sitting here to write the show notes is the hard bit. But oh. very soon we'll be we'll be we'll have money rolling in from this show, so we'll be able to invest the ninety seven dollars a week to get the notes done professionally. Yeah, absolutely. And with that thought, I will leave you. Yeah, see you soon. Bye. Yep. Bye for now. Bye. 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 You've been listening to Nicola Cairncross and Judith Morgan. The podcast is called Own It, Your Business and Your Life. Do come and visit us at ownitthepodcast.com. We'd love to hear your feedback. You can find out more about Judith and visit her on her website at judithmorgan.com and you can find Nicola at nicolacairncross.com. Gotta take it off.